In this lesson, we'll cover work sharing ownership. So for this lesson, we're going to open up the user copy of the central file that we created in previous exercises. If you don't have that, the file you can open for this exercise is work sharing underscore username. And that's what I'm going to do for this example. So let's go to the open button in Revit, browse to chapter 19, and select the file work sharing underscore username. Now, technically, it's going to be the name of the central file underscore your username. And feel free to use that file if you want from the previous exercise. However, if you don't have that file or not sure of that file, please use this one. So open up work sharing underscore username. This again is the local user copy of the file that was created from the central file. So this is the one that I would be working on on my local computer and then synchronizing changes back to the actual central file. So let's talk about the work set ownership and how it works. So to view these work sets, let's go to the Collaborate tab, and on the left, click Work Set. Now these are the work sets that were originally created on the central file. Right now they're all marked as No for editable. And really what that means is no one has ownership of any of these work sets. So anyone can take ownership. Now you may say, well, do I want to take ownership or don't I want to take ownership? Well, here's a couple things if you want to take ownership and why you may or may not want to take ownership. If you take ownership of one of these work sets, that means you and only you can make modifications to the elements within that work set. Maybe that's a plus because that locks everyone else from making any type of design change or modification to those elements in the work set. However, it could be detrimental too because if you're working in a team and someone else is using a shared work set, you can't necessarily modify it because you have it locked. Now, another reason to actually take ownership is if you're under design review. So if something is designed and you do not want to allow anyone to make a modification, whether purposely or accidentally, you can take ownership of the work set, therefore locking it. So how do you do that? So let's say you wanted to work on the actual plumbing layout and I want to take ownership of the work set. Basically, all I have to do is change no to yes and then your name would appear under owner. Now, my login for this session is one. Yours would probably be your name or however you log into Windows. Then all I have to do is click OK. Now, I have ownership of that work set. That work set is mine. I could do the same thing for other work sets as well. But what you want to do is if you're working within the work set, whether you have ownership of it or not, you want to make sure it's the active work set. And I could do that in the drop down here on the very top of my ribbon or the same thing on the bottom of your screen. Now, you may say, well, why do I want to activate it? Didn't I just take ownership of the plumbing work set? Yes, you did. Taking ownership, again, just locks the work set and anything in it so others can't modify it. But the reason you want to activate a work set is because anything you add to Revit moving from this point forward is associated to the active work set. So if I want to work on plumbing, I make sure I activate the plumbing work set. Then if I change, and let's say I want to work on the mechanical system, HVAC, well, make sure you activate the HVAC work set. Which again, you don't have to take ownership. You only have to take ownership if you want to lock that work set. But if you just want to actually add something or modify something to the work set, meaning others can do the same thing too, just activate the work set. Now, once you're done with any modifications you've made, you can synchronize. Again, synchronize being here within the ribbon of Collaborate. I can synchronize now, which basically pushes all the changes back to the central server and relinquishes any ownership you've taken to a work set. So in this case, since I took the plumbing ownership, it would pass it back and I give up the ownership of plumbing. Synchronize and modify settings actually has a few more additional items that you can do. One is you can relinquish the work sets if you want, and two, add comments, meaning text for history of what I've done within this time frame of synchronizing back to the actual central server. Click Cancel. So as a review, in this lesson, we opened up the local user file created from the central server. You could use the one you created, or we use the one that came with this lesson. Then we looked at taking ownership of work sets and what it really means. 
Well, if you take ownership of a work set, that means you and only you have control of the elements within that work set and no one else can modify them until you relinquish control. We talked about the positives and negatives, meaning the positive, if I'm under design review, I can lock that so no one can modify it. The negative is no one can modify it or add to it. The other thing we looked at was activating or choosing an active work set. You want to do this because anything you add from that point forward is added to whatever work set is active, whether you have ownership or not. And lastly, we looked at synchronizing. Synchronizing any changes back to the central server and relinquishing ownership if you've taken ownership for any work set.